be a failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. William Senor. Woo! Now with him are the founders, co-founders of the uh, Republic of course, joining us. Uh, Philip essentially wanted to pick on us today. Uh, and it's true, I, I eat very little. But hopefully, post-Republic, I'll start eating again. Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's been a true dream come true uh, to see this happen here. After seeing it happen in Berlin uh, earlier in May, I saw 20,000 wide-eyed, amazing people still believing in the capacity of tech to change the future. And I said, if there's another place on earth that I know that to be true, that is Accra Gap. I've spent the last five to six years doing exactly that. It's trying to inspire people that this is a legitimate path for you to take. Not everyone needs to work in the bank. Not everyone needs to uh, work in the civil service. Some of us must dream also about the possibilities of the future. And it's exciting to see the energy that this city has brought here today. And I know we are going to keep it all throughout. Um, I won't say much, but to say a big thank you to the German government uh, for making this happen in Accra. Let's give it up to the German government. Eh? Amazed to see how many people came to the First Republic, how many people came to the further Republic cars. And then. Excellent. So, questions, and you can direct it to the person you want to ask as well. Thank you. Um, so, I just had a question around uh, the issue of funding, and you mentioned crowdfunding. So, one of the reasons crowdfunding works abroad is that disposable income is much higher, so people have money to to channel towards you know investing in projects and things like that and savings and savings rates tend to be much much lower here in Africa and the focus for a lot of people is you know getting food and a lot on the basics what alternative methods of funding do you propose or have you seen that you think would be more effective in Africa apart from traditional models like the Silicon Valley model and crowdfunding what what what, what other sort of alternative ways do you suggest could work in Africa yeah, j just to correct you, uh, Thank you, we have we have millions of diaspora across the world. They spend billions. They send billions and billions of of dollars back to Africa. You know, we can tap into that. For example, you know, if you build a platform to tap into that money, uh, and then we have we have billionaires in Africa. Look at the billionaires in Africa. Okay, you're not following the rule. I was supposed to get five questions first, then oh. you respond. So right. <laughs> let's follow the rules. <laughs> Okay, what what other questions do we have? Okay, over there. Yes, I'll come here. Well, let me finish this one then. I'm, I'm very brief. We have billionaires in Africa, and I only know one that has an investment fund. Thank you. So it kind of ties in with that and a couple of things you've been speaking about already. What if when the two worlds come together? It seems to be a trend that every development organization wants to host their own accelerator, wants to breed their own batch of startups, and wants to sort of get in the game because you understand it's like a cool thing to do these days. And there are some um, funding organizations, like for instance, I know of a scheme that UNESCO has that specifically fund open source educational startups because it kind of is in line with what they do. But a lot of other donors are kind of like, ah, oh, let's just get 
in the game and do something along the lines. Do you, I'm directing the question more to Henry, but I'm also happy to take uh, answers from all panelists. Do you think that is a good thing because they're sort of waking up to the importance of um, small and more agile companies bringing solutions? Or do you think this is kind of creating an imbalance because a um, the funding this is coming from is public tax funding money and it's going to individual companies. Does that create a weird system in itself? Or is it also sort of new money in the game with people bringing money to the game that don't really know how to play it? And does that create new challenges? Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna to come to this side of the room. I saw a hand. Okay. Okay, um, thank you, thank you very much. My name is um, Nanay Priye and Sorry, my name is Nanai Frie, and um, it's, so it's so it's three things. I would I would like to give a brief comment just to side with my my brother here um, regarding um, funding from donor donor funding. So um, you realize that um, the top five um, top five receivers of UK aid are not even part of the first 10 of the poorest countries in Africa because their whole idea of aid is to um, is to is to let's say um, promote so that everyone can have a piece of the pie but then the idea of aid in itself as he said is really for business and it has been flawed from the very beginning such that even the first 10 of the poorest countries which we would assume would be would would be the receivers of the aid are not even part of the first five or the first ten so my next two questions um to the panelists are um so um what where, where do we where do we see the 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 trend of startups selling their ideas for money um going because it has it has now become a business model where someone just creates a really nice presentation and just looks for where the money is. Where do you see um, this trend going? And also, um, someone mentioned uh, Startup Act. Um, I have I have heard of one in Tunisia, but um, I just want to find out um, how would you stir up such a conversation between um, um, governments if it's like a conference or something like that. How 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 would you stir up such a conversation if? If let's say there's a country like Ghana that wants a startup act or needs needs something like that, how how can such a conversation be be stirred up? Thank you very much. Any more questions? So we're done. Okay, thank you. So over to you now. Okay, brilliant. I'm just gonna puzzle them out as I see fit. Uh, so perhaps we'll start with you, uh, Hamid. You could respond to that first question by uh, Geraldine. You know, around uh, crowding out, as I summarize it. So we have everybody who's anybody trying to do a hackathon. Uh, trying to start up a hub, trying to start up an innovation space, government included, uh, donors included, and then of course the usual guys, uh, you know, who are in the nation. So what, what would be your response to that? Would that work? Where does that take us? Should that be how it should be done? Alors, il y a des, il y a des phases en fait, dans, au plan international, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a international level. I mean, 30 years ago, we have a, a fashion, uh, which we call structural adjustment policy. And uh, uh, that came from the Washington consensus. When Washington staff said that Africans don't need museum, etc. A museum was closed in Senegal and it became a court because we needed to be super focused on economy issues. We needed to reduce the number of staff, etc. 15 years ago, it was another issue. And today it is incubators, etc. So, uh, we do not necessarily have negative things in this because it is very good to accompany our youth uh, on the way things are perceived by that youth but uh, we need to bring some meaning my concern it is a criticism because it is also a concern in 10 years are we not going to wake up one day or in 20 years are we not going to wake up and realize that we did nothing ago and nothing because 30 years ago we realized that african don't need museum and they are saying african did nothing today we are talking about UNESCO, we talk about the United Nations system. It is the same people who 30 years ago, they say they did just anything they wanted to do. And they are still bringing in new things. Are we not going to notice that 
in uh, 15 years we are doing just anything so uh, let me just try and tease it is super trivial it is even uh, something that is making me laugh uh, why the, let me say something very quickly because when you finish you try to tease me henry is very smart because he talks about billions and he's just trying to point like uh, a man who's not realistic it's very funny good uh, you are trying to make me uh, not the ideal man. How do I, uh, I'm not uh, idealistic. When you were telling me I'm not realistic, etc. Meanwhile, you talk about business and companies, etc. Uh, yes, that's your realist. But anyway, we talk about it later. I should come in there quickly and say that I think you both have realities and uh, the idea is just to see whether we can meet mine. Yeah. Um, so I'll allow you at the end to perhaps. Uh, give us as a parting shot what you think is your reality and you tell us what your reality is would you want to comment on the question around crowding out of players perhaps any thoughts i mean uh again that's that's the money game i mean uh there's a lot of funding in because again entrepreneurship is cool uh a lot of donors like those uh those programs so people are smart they package they create an organization to tap into those funding I've done nine accelerator program in four years. I can tell 90% uh, of them are uh, a waste of time. Okay, man, man's, man's short and to the point. <laughs> so here's one for you. Um, startups selling ideas for money. Kind of feel like you've already responded to that, but you know, just, just humor us. So someone was asking, what do you think? What do you think would be the trend going forward on startups who just come up with a pitch deck and then they're selling the ideas to the highest bidder is that entrepreneurship yeah but that it doesn't really work like that I, uh, you got to do a little bit more to get money but uh, I mean uh, you know it's it's hard to to generalize something there's so many different aspects of entrepreneurship there's people that build businesses just to sell them to to the highest bidder there's people that build businesses that you really want to have an impact I, I can't I can't judge anybody's uh, vision and goals if you want to sell your business if you want to pitch get some money that's you, you know, you do what you want to do. Uh, me personally, you know, I'm passionate about what I do. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much it.